This is our Forex blog for November 5th, 2012. And like we do most days, we start off with our currency meter. This helps us identify and trade the strongest currencies versus the weak and sell the weakest versus the strong. This is made up of multiple of our statistical trend tools measuring multiple time frames. And the new one allows you to add some weight to the uh, daily, weekly, and monthly trend. I only give 4% weight to the monthly because it can take a week or two to change the monthly statistical trend direction. Uh, the weekly gets 13%, the daily 18%. So two-thirds of this is made up of very fast, real-time trend momentum. Uh, the percentage of currencies going up or down, uh, this is using 8% on a 5-minute bar, 10% uh, using this uh, indicator on a 5-minute bar. Uh, I have tools that measure the intensity of the trend, such as the range ADX, which actually uses 5 pips per bar range charts, which is super, super fast and it measures the intensity of that trend, and also 16% weight for the intensity of the 2-minute bars and 5-minute bars. How far is every 5-minute bar, for example, uh, moving up or down in the dollar versus every other pair for this time of the day? For instance, if the euro dollar normally moves 5 pips and the euro dollar today moves down 10 pips during the 5-minute bar, uh, that's 100% extra intensity to the downside, and that gets reflected in here. So. This is a very easy to read tool and it lets you focus on the best trends. You can see at 3, very, very strong dollar, even uh, at 130, very, very strong yen. So you're basically looking to sell the euro dollar, euro yen, pound dollar, pound yen, uh, buy the dollar Swiss and sell the Swiss yen. So let's start with the euro dollar and euro yen first. Here is the uh, euro dollar and you can see our tool found the sell right at the high. Uh, mainly because it was the previous day's high and there was a reversal chart pattern at a key reflection point and the market, uh, the weekly monthly trend was down at that time so it gave a sell signal, cut the whole move down. The circle bars, dots, are possible counter trend signals and basically we recommend using them to uh, tighten your stop or usually when you see one of these, if you draw your fibs on that first swing there, Typically, the market's not going to go beyond the 1.618. As you can see, this is exactly what happened. came down, there was a counter trend signal. It did go down almost to the pip to the 1.618 fib target, and that was the end of the move uh, for hours. And it briefly went down, and you can see it hit the 2.0 fib level and then bounced. So if these are low odds counter trend trades, they will be displayed in gray. If they're higher probability counter trend trades, you'll see them in uh, green or red and bigger circles versus smaller ones if it's a higher probability. So very intuitive and, and clear to, to read. You can see this was a counter trend trade right near a FIB level, the 2.0 containment band, and it was less weak here than before. Typically if you're going to take a counter trend trade, trade a little bit smaller lots and don't be greedy. Typically when a market makes a big move like this, it will retrace to the 38% retracement level, which is right here. So 2,800 level is your profit target. You would have been long here somewhere around 86. So you're going to risk about 8 or 9 pips to make uh, 14 to 20 pips. And that's exactly what happened here. And on the pullback up, if you had gone short right here, you would have lost 5 pips. Uh, this one never broke that bar as low. That's the entry method. Once you get a sell signal, you sell when it goes 1 pip below the low. So we're short this one here at 01. Trailing stock got you out at 91, you made 10 pips. And then this last one right here at 97, got you out right here around 75, you made 20 something pips. Selling down near the Fibonacci area, lower containment bands is a lower uh, probability trade, wait for a decent pullback. Uh, let's take a look at the Euro Yen now. Here's the Euro Yen. Remember at 130, uh, the currency meter showed that to be looking for some sales. It went sideways right here and broke down. Um, and so that's where you would have wanted to get in there the first trade. You wait for a pullback, you go short, you would have probably had a small loss, small win. This trade right here generated about 25 pips. And once the market goes down below the white band, typically you're going to want a 38 to 50 percent pullback before you go short, uh, just so that you don't get stuck selling the absolute lows. That's why this trade here is a low probability trade. It's almost impossible to teach a computer to accurately draw fibs. So, you know, just identify the currencies using our currency meter. Once the market makes a big move, draw your fibs on there and look to get short at the 38, and I prefer the 50. Uh, but if you had sold right here, you probably would have made 15 pips. Sold right here, maybe made 20, 25 pips. 
and you wouldn't have wanted to sell right here because it was right near the lower band. Uh, it, you know, it's possible the trend could go down, um, but if you do short right there, at least, you know, if the market goes your way a little bit, and you can see this bar right here didn't have that much weakness, at least move your stop up a little bit and maybe you only lose four or five pips on those trades that are low odds. And, you know, typically these patterns are based on chart patterns, so if, if it goes a little bit higher uh, and the momentum isn't any higher than it was before in the first sell signal, you can, you know, look to sell again. You can also use uh, oscillator type readings. If you get a sell signal and then there's another uh, higher high and the oscillator shows overbought, typically that trade will work if you have all the longer time frame trends are down. Now let's take a look at the dollar Swiss. The dollar was very strong. The Swiss and the euro are pegged together. They tend to, to go in the opposite direction. So let's take a look at that one. I mean, I'm sorry, they, the Swiss is pegged to the euro. So if the, the euro is weak, the Swiss is weak and vice versa. One thing to be aware of is it always uh, helps to look at longer time frame charts. So let's bring up a dollar Swiss uh, daily chart just to uh, give you a feel for um, you know what the longer time frame trend is and where key support resistance is. Now, the dollar Swiss uh, for the last few months has been going down. Obviously, it's been going sideways. We made a slight lower low um, here, the false breakout, and it came back up, and it's been kind of going sideways. It looks like uh, the other day it kind of broke out of a little wedge pattern right there, and uh, this is the you know, 20 day high right here around 29. It's really bullish above that level. Um, and let's look at it on a 30 minute chart too so you can see where your trend lines are and where the breaks are. Let me get rid of some of these on here. A lot of times you can draw uh, trend lines, you know, on previous trends and when they get broken, as of last Friday here, uh, you have a new uptrend until pretty much the, the uh, you know, uptrend line gets broken. So one thing that you can do when you draw these trend lines is right click on the chart, duplicate it, and then project it from the high. And usually it's going to give you uh, that day's maximum high. Uh, I noticed I took a trade in, in I think the Euro dollar or Euro yen today. That was the exact uh, same pattern on the downside. Let me draw the ray on here. And once you do that, you right click, duplicate, project it off the lows. And you can see that these levels are excellent at identifying reversals. This is the one I got into a little counter trend trade at. Uh, because, you know, trend lines, Fibonacci areas, Fibonacci profit target levels uh, work very well. Now, Fibonacci levels and Fib targets, I spend 30 or 40 minutes every night drawing them, putting these levels up on our server. Our software automatically downloads those and puts those on your chart. The dark gray levels are Fibonacci profit target levels. And these are going to be typically where the market reverses at. Usually when they happen to be above the white 2.0 band, you can scale into a trade and usually make 10 to 30 pips on a counter trend trade. You know, for, for example, let's say at this band right here, uh, you enter by selling one lot. It goes up uh, 5 to 15 pips. You sell another lot or two lots. Uh, typically I will uh, scale in so that if it does make a big move up, to wherever that FIB target is, it might be 94.65, I'll add double however many lots I have uh, already at that FIB area. And that what that does is it yanks your, your average entry, usually about 6 to 12 pips away. Price pulls back 6 pips, you're a break even. Uh, pulls back 25 pips, you have a huge position. And, you know, once you learn how to do that, you can make a living just from that trade alone uh, at these extreme levels and especially at Fibonacci areas above our bands. And it also helps that if the market goes up and the longer time frame trend, maybe the weekly, monthly trends down, uh, it's very, very high probability, and it's one of my favorite personal trades. But this one was one that you wanted to look to buy today. You can see it went sideways for many, many hours. It's one of the main entries I look for. I'm not usually trading at 2.33 in the morning. But anytime you get a sideways rectangle for a couple hours, it breaks out. It's very likely to go to the next uh, resistance area, which is a monthly pivot level here. The previous month's high rise right here. Our upper containment band is right there. This is an area that if you bought right here, you're going to risk six to eight pips, and you have a very good chance of making 15 to 25 pips. 
And that's exactly what happened. So once it makes a nice size move up, draw your fibs on there. Ideally wait for a 38% pullback. So you might have got in the trade here, lost 5 pips, got in again here and made 15. Uh, got in again here and made 10. Uh, or actually uh, probably 15 again. So you made about 30 pips, lost 7. Uh, 23 pips on these 3 trades. This breakout trade, you know, was very profitable. And if you wanted to scale into counter trend trades, you made made one uh, profitable counter trend trade there, there, and you would have had a very beautiful one up here because you would have scaled into it a little bit. Uh, again, I scale in lightly and then progressively get uh, more uh, lots. That's how I personally do it. Always practice out for a few months on a demo trade because if you don't know what you're doing, you can wipe your account out. But uh, I can tell you, if you learn how to do it right, you can make a living doing just that one trade alone using our bands, using my FIB targets, and also drawing your your levels. Uh, I think it was also the Euro Yen maybe that, that came down. If, if you have a FIB target that's right near uh, a trend line area, and again, a trend line, once you draw it, duplicate it, plot it from the low, look at how that it hugged the low there. And the reason that, for that is because this is one of those tools that traders use, the Euro Yen down at these levels. Let's look at this uh, right here at um, 3 o'clock in the morning. The euro yen at 3 o'clock in the morning is one that you want to look to buy. Now typically when currencies are weak, uh, they're going to not explode up immediately. Uh, if you wanted to take a trade down there, you could certainly try that. But the fact that this kind of came down, it was extremely weak, rallied up a little bit, came down again, couldn't break that previous low significantly. You got another counter trend signal. Uh, I love getting into breakouts near the lows when they're below the white 2.0 band. Uh, it was a monthly pivot level right there, and the monthly trend is down, but it's not super weak. The weekly and daily trend is down pretty much, and the real time trend's down. Once you get into this trade, you can see it was going up. It didn't have that much strength. So as soon as you start getting some counter trend or some trend trades, you might get out here. And you always want to draw your FIBs. Typically, the 38% is where the maximum profit is going to be. So this came up to 81. The 38% FIB retracement is at 86. It's only five pips away. So anytime you do a counter trend trade, don't get greedy. I would have probably exited half my trade here and my other half here. For an average exit somewhere around 73, it would have been in this trade at 63. This is one of the things that you wouldn't have scaled into a big position, so it would have been a very small profit, but um, a very reliable profit doing counter trend. Once the market retraces, then you go back and trade it with a trend.